So now I give the word to Rodrigo, who will present the first case. Um, I'm going to show you a case of a 68-year-old male patient who has rectal bleeding. He has no obstructive symptoms. BMI of 32, so chubby guy, hypertension, no family history of rectal cancer or colorectal cancer, and we can feel the tumor with digital rectal examination. Um, I'm going to go straight ahead. This is a clearly adenocarcinoma. CEA is 12. KRAS, wild type, and microsatellite stable disease. And I'm going to run through the MRI, so we, for the interest of time, you can see clearly this um, is a extra peritoneal disease. You can see the, the level of the tumor is beyond the reflection of the peritoneal reflection. You can see some EMVI on the sagittal views. And on the axial views, you can see that the EMVI is actually very close to the mesorectal fascia, which is drawn here in green. This is also true on the left side, but what shows here is with the arrow is a seven millimeter node for Professor Rutten to come and follow uh, later on. You can see the primary tumor here, and again, there's some more EMVI very close to the mesorectal fascia. So, CT scans, there is a liver hemangioma here, and there are at least eight very small lesions in the liver parenchyma, um, mostly in the right lobe of the liver. So we have a primary rectal cancer, extra peritoneal disease, mesorectal fascia is threatened, EMVI positive, and we're gonna switch the screen for the polling of the audience so you can actually vote on specific treatment strategies you'll be interested in. And as the votes come in, I will ask Professor Haustermans to lead on the discussion here. Okay. Um, maybe we can first ask David's opinion. There is a clear preference for chemotherapy alone first. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes, I would say that, that that'd be what most people would do here. Um, they, they would give up front chemotherapy because there's evidence of metastatic disease. Um, and, you know, assess after, say, you know, 12 weeks of treatment, monitoring the tumor markers during chemotherapy. Um, yes, that's certainly what we would do. Um, chemo would be... I mean, it could be K-pox, it could be um, fulfilling Cetux if the tumor was RAS, RAF well type. Now, as a radiation oncologist, um, I think there are also some arguments of starting with a very short course of radiotherapy, only five fractions, and then followed by full dose of chemotherapy, as locally this is also a very advanced tumor. Um, maybe we can continue. Okay, so we'll switch back to the slides. Um, so during our own MDT discussion, there was a very vivid discussion, and there was an agreement that this patient would have to, at some point, receive radiation therapy. So because of the mesorectal fascia threatening, we decided to give short course radiation therapy, five days, followed by full chemotherapy, um, as indicated here. So maybe we could switch again the slides so that the audience could vote what would be the preferred chemotherapy treatment here um, for the use after short course radiation therapy. I'm, I'm, I was actually surprised that nobody in the panel discussed the radiation therapy in the setting of threatened margins and lateral node involvement and relying solely on the chemotherapy. I just as a surgeon. No, but I, I think, can I just come back on that point? <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the initial question was, what's the initial treatment? So in this patient here, I would imagine, unless there was a, 
you know, a stratospheric response to chemotherapy that this patient is going to get radiotherapy. Um, I think actually giving short course up front is not is a perfectly reasonable approach. But we would reassess after 12 weeks, and you know sometimes the disease melts away. Uh, but we're most likely to ultimately offer this patient radiotherapy. So no, just to be clear, I wasn't saying chemo, no radio. <clears throat> okay, Ali, can you comment on the voting here? What is the I, preferred option? I agree option? with the audience with the use of combination chemotherapy with the epidermal growth factor because of the incremental increase of the response rate in all randomized trial. But if you compare with anti-VHF, there is no incremental increase in the response rate. And would you go for full Fox or for full I will go for full Fox. Okay, so we can get to the, to the slides, please. Um, the patient got actually full Fox Siri plus bevacizumab. Um, this was the decision of the MDT with the medical oncology. He developed, after two cycles of treatment, severe anal pain, um, severe mucositis. Um, we did an MRI. I'm going to run through the MR. And really what the MR shows is really a ulceration of the posterior rectal wall. Um, and you can see here with the um, deposits, the, the pain was so significant, the patient actually required an epidural for pain control, and we eventually took him to the OR to see what the anus was looking like. And you can see here, there's clearly a very, very deep anal fissure, and you can see where the anal fissure is, and you can see the sphincters being exposed, and you can see the rectal mucosa is um, right above it. Um, so the question is here, and unfortunately not for the voting, but perhaps the, the surgeons and, and could comment, and if anyone else could comment, on what the preferred management upon looking at these images would be. Albert, can you give your opinion? Yeah, I would. I mean, treatment of the fissure is very hard, so I would just treat it locally, and, um, and now it's time to, to restage the patient, definitely. And, um, and, and discuss it in the MDT again. And, um, and, and um, well, you can either, yeah, if, if, he's ha if he hasn't had his full therapy yet, then you should balance the, the pain and the symptoms he has versus... So he's got two cycles of Fulfoxiri uh, and Bevacizumab. Two cycles. Yeah. So it's probably still too early for surgery then. <clears throat> Can I just say that, I mean, this patient, I would never have given them bevacizumab for a start off because I think it's an anti-angiogenic drug. It does cause fistula. It causes perforation in those sort of tumors. So we tend to avoid it. I mean, we would, and I wouldn't have gone for a triplet. I mean, he's, he's ras raf well type. So I don't know what the evidence for that is. Um, I would certainly have gone for either an EGFR and HIPAA plus chemo. And you would have had a much lower chance of getting that. I think that that whole thing with Bev, it's, I mean, people underestimate, you know, anal fissures and fistulas, they're really common and they absolutely ruin people's lives. You know, they, they just want anything but to get rid of that pain, which is very difficult to manage. Yeah, maybe this is the moment to give this patient a stoma. Okay, um, so that's one of the interesting questions. Do you want to restage? Because short course radiation therapy may have had a role here, so we're going to restage the patient. You can see here, pre-treatment staging is the threatening of the mesorectal fascia, but very significant response to the, of the EMVI component. So apparently there is no uh, more threatening of the mesorectal fascia here, both on the la right lateral side, but also on the posterior side. So very, very significant primary tumor response. I'm, I'm probably guessing you're very happy that you're given short course radiation therapy now. Um, and but, here but, you can see... What, he had no complaints when, before you started your treatment, and his prognosis is determined by his liver mats, and now he has severe complaints. So what, what have you achieved? So uh, let, me, let me get back to you then, Harm Rutten. What would you do here? So the patient has got very significant response. He has a major anal fissure. He's two weeks out of 
Beva Sissumab, can you do what, what you wouldn't do? Just colostomy? Yeah, diverting colostomy. So it, it gives you time, and, it, uh, and we don't know how long his, his pain will last, but this man has a limited life expectancy, and to fill it with pa anal pain is not the right way to go, I think. And probably diverting colostomy will alleviate his pain considerably. Albert? Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure that, uh, that the diverting colostomy will, uh, will, will be of benefit at present, especially as a BMI of 32. It will not be easy to, to put on a, a, a colostomy in this case. It, co it probably has some morbidity as well. So maybe it's time, because the MRI shows a favorable response, maybe it's time to think of, of primary surgery of the primary tumor now. Uh, to, to think of surgery of the primary tumor now, uh, because otherwise you will probably miss that, uh, miss that step. So if you're going to do primary surgery, pr surgery for the primary tumor, are you taking out the lateral node as well, or are you going to leave that there? No. Yeah, I would go for option one then. You take everything out with an anastomosis? Yeah. And Haram, what would you do? Apart from this diverting so, colostomy, would you go for these lateral lymph nodes in this case? No, I wouldn't. I don't think it did the development of a local recurrence for this suspicious node, but he, he didn't. You know, most of these suspicious nodes will, will go away with, uh, with preoperative treatment. So this would, be a lat uh, this would be a prophylactic lateral lymph node dissection, which really, I think, adds to the trauma. Mm -hmm. And I would be very unhappy with a primary anastomosis without a diverting colostomy. So, so no, I would I would divert the anastomosis, of course. So then I would do the less the, the lesser thing, and that would be just to give only a diverting colostomy. David, okay, Rodrigo, David, David is not happy. No, yeah, but I guess he, we have no, two colostomies. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm perfectly happy with the surgical, surgical considerations. What I'm really concerned is is that. <clears throat> You know, this patient got radiotherapy short course. It's still a, equivalent to a big dose of radiotherapy. Then he gets full foxy and Bev straight on the back of it. This has never been tested to be safe. You know, I mean, th th this is a completely shooting from the hip. Um, and, and <laughs> you know, if we'd stuck to the original idea of giving him chemotherapy, then the liver disease would presumably be responding, the primary would too, and we could then think in a more no, controlled way yeah. about what we do. Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to run over because otherwise we won't be time for the next case. So we did uh, primary resection of the primary cancer, no anastomosis because of the, you, you can see the size of the anal fissure here. There was no place for anastomosis. It was clearly not a good, good moment to do that. We did go after the lateral node. Um, and here you can see the specimen. I'm going to run over through. Very good specimen, believe me. And this is the final pathological staging here. You can see there is still disease in the mesorectum. Very good response. This is a TRG2. However, we have 8 out of 55 lymph nodes positive. None of the lateral nodes were positive. And... This is how the patient evolved. This is wound infection and wound dif difficulties in healing. You can see the stoma difficulties in healing. Post-treatment, three months, this is how the liver looks like after, uh, after the surgery of the primary. Apparently stable disease. CEA has gone from 11 to 6. Um, very short answers from the surgeons and maybe from the medical oncologist. More chemo or is it time for liver resection now? Ali, what would you say? If the liver is okay and the patient condition permit that, I will go for liver resection. Liver resection now. Surgeons agree? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, not sure whether the patient is okay. The patient is okay, but I see David is not happy still. David, please, you're not happy. Well, he was 20 days in hospital. So 20 I, days. So I think he, this man needs to recover, and, and probably you re, we give him three months and then restage this patient and then yeah. decide what to do with the patient. So uh, I, it, what we do need is time. We need to observe, observe this patient, know something about the biological behavior, Probably this patient cannot uh, have any more chemotherapy 
direct after discharge. So you have to wait and see what happens. So he has no primary cancer, he has liver meds, and we're going to watch him wait? Yes. Let, really? Let the patient recover and then decide whether you should, would so go So the, the patient is recovered. He's perfectly fine. After three months, let's say. He's 20 days, he's out of the hospital, he's back uh, to... Well, my, my problem is that you have, you have a patient with a very advanced primary disease. You have eight liver meds. So this patient, it's not sure whether this patient will do well. I, I think the biggest mistake would be major surgery in these kind of patients you did major surgery for the primary. I think it's, it is not in place to this, this major surgery for the primary in, in this patient. And now you're proposing major surgery for the liver. It's eight liver mats all over the liver, so it, it will be hazardous. And then it still can be that this patient will pro be progressive so that you cannot cure him with, with surgery. So there is, there is, in my opinion, an end to what you can achieve. So this patient has, has to show me his biological behavior. And if that's okay after three months, and he's recovered well, and he's fine, we start again and think what's the best approach to this patient. So, but I can imagine that if you do a liver scan after three months, you will see that it's not eight mats, but it will be probably 20 mats. So this is three, three month interval scans, stable disease, Eight mats. So you did not operate on this patient. You did wait. Yeah. You asked yeah. me for three month scans. There you are. <laughs> what else can you? I, no, you know, better. I didn't change my slides yeah. now. Yeah. I, I, you asked for it. I would. Uh, I would consider um, uh, stereotactic radiotherapy. I would consider R RFA, something like that. Say it again. I would consider treatment of the liver, but maybe not major surgery. Resection then. No. Um, RFA? Yeah. So he has David is not happy. He hasn't had chemotherapy. I mean, I mean, I'd I maybe should this continue patient, with I mean, chemotherapy. You're showing after it's happened, you've probably got three or four versions on that computer of yours. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I, my instinct here would be firstly, I'd strike bevacizumab off the list. This patient's not going to get Bev again because he's still got, you know, a, some sort of sinus that will take ages to heal. I would be thinking about giving him chemo. I'd have, if he's fit and well, I'd have given him chemo straight away, and I'd have gone for folfiri and cetuximab, <coughs> which I'd have gone in the first place. Um, I'd go for a doublet, not a triplet, and you know, try and get good disease control with a targeted agent. I mean, he has got a, he is Raz Raphael type. Okay, so final poll, and then we close the case? Yeah, maybe we should close it now, because okay. it's getting late, and we have another case. All right. Yeah, thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Joe. So the second case, this is a 55-year-old male patient with a negative past medical and surgical history. He's a chronic heavy smoker and moderate alcohol intake with a negative family history of malignancy. He presented with the blood per rectum constipation and weight loss of around 5 kilograms in the last two months. Colonoscopy showed near nearly obstructing mass at the five centimeter from the inner verge and pathology infiltrating moderate differentiated adenocarcinoma, raspberry of wild, and MSS. His initial CA was 44. This is his uh, CT findings. We have a large central liver mass measuring nine by four centimeter and locally advanced uh, rectal cancer with a nearly obstructive uh, lesion. What will be your approach for a patient with a symptomatic, nearly obstructive lesion and synchronous uh, non-surgical liver metastasis? Can you vote, please? Synchronous one. No, no. While you're voting, we can maybe ask the radiologist uh, about the role of MRI of the pelvis in this setting. I think uh, in this case it's very locally advanced 
And maybe to have a, a better view at the local situation, uh, MRI is really <laughs> uh, advisable to also see lymph nodes, for example, and the exact extent to the mesorectal fascia and so on. Yes, we agree on that. And the liver, was it a solitary liver metastasis or? Yes, it is a large centrally located liver metastasis. Okay, David, can you comment on the options of the voting? Me? Yes. yes. Uh, this is a patient with significant rectal symptoms of metastatic disease. So he might actually, because of the nature of his symptoms, said they're very bad, we'd probably ask for a defunctioning procedure. Yeah. And then give him chemo. Because when you give these people chemo and, and if they obstruct, you know, the surgeons are operating on them with a neutral count that's low, they get complications. I, I'm afraid that's, that's what we would tend to do in that case. Um, well, so in principle, systemic chemotherapy will be the first choice. While the patient was admitted on the second day, can we go to the slides? This is the PET scan also prior to. Can you comment on the PET, please? Um, yeah, <laughs> it confirms the very advanced uh, local situation, I think, and maybe higher up there might also be a lymph node metastasis. Um, and then, of course, I think the solitary, very large liver Thank metastasis. Thank you. Would you do an MRI of the liver? Uh, what type of chemotherapy for the audience, if you want to start first on chemotherapy? Can you vote on that? So approximately 70 percent of the patients vote on f combination chemotherapy with anti-epidermal growth factor. Can we have the slides again? So this is the uh, patient when he started on systemic chemotherapy. He received six cycle of Folfox with panitumumab, and you can see a tremendous response locally and in the liver. This is his PET scan after the sixth cycle uh, of chemotherapy. And this is the MRI of the liver. As you can see, very localized small lesion in the liver. So the patient has a good response. What will be your next step? Can we have the voting again, please? So, any comment from the panel? I think it's very important to know what, what actually is still there of the primary tumor. So, I would like to have an MRI scan of the rectum to decide whether radiotherapy is necessary for a curative approach of the rectum. I think this is a patient which could have a curative approach. Okay. Supposedly, has a good response locally. What will be your next step? Well, it, it depends on whether the margins are threatened or not. And, I mean, you can be philosophical now. I mean, we need an MRI to, to look at the primary tumor, but if the margins are free, then you can do either simultaneous resection or you can do chemoradiotherapy, in my opinion. So you'll go for a section or will you recommend first to do a radiation therapy before a section? Well, I think there is a point for radiation therapy. This, this huge tumor 
will yeah. probably still be there and it has turned into fibrosis or whatever and we're not sure about the vitality of, of the fibrosis there but I, I really would as a surgeon I would not operate on this patient without an MRI that's sure. so I, if I did, didn't have it in my own hospital I would go to another hospital and, and have it made because that that's really the issue now to decide can we do surgery straight away and is it is it enough to have chemotherapy for the size reduction and the downstaging of the primary tumor but I, <coughs> I think we can do both tumors in a cur with curative intent so we should be optimally uh, informed we do not have any, any problem with the liver the liver responded very well so it will not grow uh, very soon so we have time to do uh, an adequate treatment of the rectum and if this would mean that we would irradiate the patient we can irradiate the patient do you do the liver first or the rectum first well if we would give the patient um, uh, radiotherapy there is a waiting time before we would do the surgery so then we could do the liver first approach but I don't think that it's a very major surgery on the liver so the added morbidity of doing both together might be acceptable if you know what's going what you need to do with the with mm -hmm. the rectum yeah. I, I think both slide? ways can be done I, I yeah. agree what, what is the, the performance status of the what's the ASA classification is he is zero he, yeah he called zero yes. yeah and I also would prefer to do a simultaneous approach okay maybe in, in the interest of time maybe we can continue can we have the slides again? So he has resection of segment five with a part of four and uh, seven. And this is the pathology. He still has residual disease. And he was planning to have uh, local regional radiation therapy. But during that, he developed lung lesions with the largest in the right upper loop, as you can see here. Although his CAA dropped markedly and did not rise again within the range of the normal range. And as you can see, the, uh, the CT scan in subsequent uh, times showed unchanged primary rectal tumor and decrease in the retroperitoneal lymph node and significant interval decrease in the size of the lung nodules. And this are the series of CA and still he has a CA with a normal limits. So the CT scan in September 19 showed the same findings, stable pulmonary nodule, no new pathologic, uh, pathology in the chest. What will be your next step? Surgery with RFA lung lesion or biopsy and RFA or to continue on the same treatment and switch to maintenance therapy. How much uh, Folfiri and Cetux has he had? How many, how many cycles of Folfiri and Cetux? Six. Six, 12 weeks of treatment. Yeah, he, he was maintained on uh, fluoropyrimidine okay. and bevacizumab. And how many lung metastases does he have? He has multiple lung nodules. Multiple lung? With the large and right upper lobe. Well, if he's got multiple lung metastases, he's got metastatic disease, he needs to have a systemic approach. I mean, that, that's what I would have thought. Um, it's unfortunate, but the, the horse is bolted. If he's got multiple lung metastases, then... Multi multiple lung nodules, oh, but so the largest in the right upper lung. You're saying they're not cancer, then? <laughs> this is what the description. Okay. 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 Maybe can we, we have can finish? the slides again? So the patient continued on fluoropyrimidine and bevatizumab. He has stable... Uh, disease and the abdomen and pelvis and the PET scan showed the only positivity in the uh, right upper lung nodule so we elected to do a CT guided biopsy and ablation of the, in the same setting of the right upper lung nodules and pathologies showed the same uh, adenocarcinoma and we elect to continue 
on the same treatment, provided that the patient may have other lesions that may evolve later on. And CT of the abdomen and pelvis and chest till May 19 did not show any change. What will be your next step, Dr. Cunningham? Um, no, I, well, I mean, this is a very difficult case. I, I, I'm thinking that, that if he's had a good response and the response is maintained, then we're not going to cure this patient unless these nodules, most of them are not cancer. Assuming they're cancer, then you might want to just give them a break off treatment. Yeah, observation. I mean, you know, give them some quality of life. Yeah, yeah I, I think that is what we would do. This patient is needs only palliative treatment, I think, and there's not nothing yeah, to has palliate. Very, no. he's not, we are not palliating. He has a very good performance. Yeah, so observation. It is not a palli palliation. <laughs> no, that if not, if palliation is not necessary, I certainly would do only surgery of the primary tumor if there is a need to do this. And he's not symptomatic from the primary. Yeah, so, so leave the primary and lung mats, they can go on for quite a long period of time. So I think I agree uh, with David. I this would, is why I would, we are I would continuing observe the same strategy. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you for the nice case presentations. Thank you to the speakers for their nice presentations. And also thank you to the audience for remaining that late. And have a nice evening.